folks, Mark with Fire Mountain Outdoors. Uh, thanks for joining me again for episode, I think it's episode four of this power station build. Um, you know, I left off, we had a work stoppage because I needed an arbor for my hole saw. I found some inch and an eighth hole saws to install these power sockets, but I didn't have an arbor. I probably have seven of them, but I couldn't find one to save my life. So uh, I went by the old Home Depot today and I stopped by and and uh, to buy an arbor and I could buy an arbor for $14.87 and I was like all right I guess and I grabbed it and I had it in my hand and then I looked and they had hole saws with arbors in them and I bought an inch and an eighth hole saw with the arbor for uh, $12 a, a few dollars less to get the arbor and a uh, three dollar hole saw or four dollar hole saw this is crazy so look around when you're shopping save yourself a buck uh, what we're doing is we're going to be installing all of these it seems like in my family uh there's never enough outlets for all the things you they're especially charging phones or pads or devices or all that everyone's always fighting for a thing and there's not enough space to plug them in and so uh, we're doing we're doing nine of these. I can't uh, ever imagine needing nine. We're doing nine of them. Two of them are USB sockets that have uh, uh, three USBs a piece. So we'll have six USB chargers. These ones have a USB C uh, on each one also for high current devices. And then uh, I'm also putting in a high output uh, regular cigarette lighters, a 20 amp deal these other ones are lighter duty and they're 15 amps but uh, i wanted a heavier duty one for running an air compressor or, or high amperage loads you know so uh, we're also going to add another 110 outlet over here and then i'm probably going to end up just uh, having a little power strip that i just throw in here and then when we get to our destination pull it out and stick it up on top so you can plug in whatever 115 stuff you got to do so, uh, I've got the tools, let's get to work. Well, we got all these installed and I think it turned out pretty good. And I'm glad that we uh, installed these first and before drilling the rest of the holes because I discovered back here, I planned on uh, putting another 110 outlet like this one up here. And uh, now that I've realized that my clearances would interfere. So I'm glad I didn't drill a hole there before installing this. So I'm going to do what I really needed to do, but I was trying to avoid it. You know, these, these plugs came from the factory with a cord. And, and the cord's kind of nice that it's all there together and you don't have to mess with it. But... I, I really need an outlet in the front. That would that would be logical, right? To have a 115 plug in the front. The problem is, is that the cord would be too short. I can't reach the inverter. So uh, that's that's not a big deal. I was just trying to be lazy. Um, the inverter has has a little power strip back here for a hot neutral on the ground. And so I'm just going to have to get me a chunk of SO cord. I, I know I have that laying around. And I'm just going to hardwire that into here and then route that up and over into there uh, where it's going to work. So we've got the fuse block. Uh, that's going to be for our loads. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run two of these off of, uh, off of one fuse. And uh, we're going to go from there. One thing uh, before anybody jumps in here and comments. Yes, I do plan on putting a... I'm going to change this to 8 gauge and I'm going to put a 40 amp circuit breaker between here and and uh and this fuse block so that I've got some current protection for this wire right here. So that's incorrect the way it is cuz it's unfused all the loads downstream would be fused. Uh and so that's going to be uh it's going to be rectified. So I'm going to get to work on wiring. This. just about done and uh, the elephant in the room is why in the holy heck do we have these led indicators but we'll talk to that in a second 
Um, if you're going to be wiring up a bunch of these sockets, you're going to have to be uh, really attentive to which is the positive and which is a negative. So I got these, uh, these sockets from a couple of different suppliers. And you can see that the pattern's not uniform. This is, uh, they all have script on the front. And so the top would be, you look at the top and they, some are centered and some are not or whatever. You got to pay close attention to the polarity on the back. So uh, some of these are jumped left to left, left to left, and other ones are left to right. And we had to do that in order to get the polarity correct. Now let's talk about wiring just for a little bit. And I just want to share a few things that I've learned. And this isn't necessarily the right way or the wrong way, but uh, this is how I've been doing this stuff for 30 years to make a living. Now, if you're going to be using a crimper, you want a, you want a good crimper. The, this particular style is my favorite. Uh, the ones that have just kind of a clamshell on the front that you get in a terminal kit, those suck. You need to have you need to have that little tit right here, um, and in order for it to kind of impinge on the terminal and make a good crimp. Now all of your terminals are going to have a seam. You see that right there? That's not just one tubular piece. It has a seam right there, and we want that seam to be we don't want to impinge on that seam with the with the tit on our crimper we want to crush the back side of that in there and the curved side to support that so uh, if i was going to put this wire on since we're putting the wire on let's make a note on uh on how long we should make our wire so we don't want the wire to be long enough that it's going to it's going to go up and impinge on where our spade is or or mess with our nut on a ring terminal. So I like to have it so it just barely sticks out just like that. And then if we're going to use our crimpers, I always look, verify where the seam is, and then I want the tit on my crimper on the back side. And then we find just about the middle, make sure that the the wire is seated in there uh, with the insulation up against the end of the terminal. Now that'll be under insulation. I took this one apart just to show you. And then you, you, you need to crimp it. You need to mash the crap out of it. And see, it puts a divot in the back. See how that didn't split the seam? If we would have done it the other way, then it would have split that seam and split the wire and we would have ended up with the kind of a loose crimp in two halves. But this, that's a good, that's a good crimp. That's a good mechanical seal. Now, you also probably notice that I have kind of a hodgepodge of different terminals there, and that's that's just kind of a, a local thing to my situation. I've got these old terminals that I've had for 20 years, and uh, and you can see these are both yellows, they're rated for 10 to 12, but you can see the difference in diameter. So I've always been able to put two 12s and maybe two 10s into one of these and crimp it, but there must have been some kind of a code change or something. But now the yellows, uh, you can't do that anymore. So, and that's probably a good thing. Probably keeps people from burning down the house or whatever. So that is, I think, oh, one more thing. Let's talk about, you know, I pigtailed, uh, I jumped two wires into a single spade on a lot of this in a, in a daisy chain. And if you're going to do that, always cut your wire for the small wire. So I did the, 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 the primary wire is larger. That's going to feed the current to both of them. And then this one's just going to feed to the other device. So I was able to go smaller in my quest to find crap that fits under the thing, just like I've been doing it forever. So, but if you're going to do that, you need to cut this wire longer because when we twist those together, it has to travel further and then it's going to end up at about the same distance. And then we can put that under our terminal, uh, get the insulation under the insulation so you don't leave anything exposed there. Uh, this The seam is always, almost always, up on the top and then we could crimp this. So... And, and that's a good crimp. That is good and secure, and you can walk away from it. Um, 
that is uh, that's just a little crimping wire wiring tutorial of stuff that I thought about while I was doing this. Now let's talk about why why do we have idiot lights? Why are there danger lights? What is going on with this red here? Well, that was a concern of mine also. So those are on these USB terminals that I have here. And you can see that even though I don't have a fuse, let's get you out of this holder right here. And let's go take a look. See, I got idiot lights. And those are those are blown fuse indicators. That's so if you're trying to troubleshoot something, uh, whenever there's a blown fuse, that will light up. As long as there's a load. And that's the part that concerns me. Why is there a load? And so we look here and there, there there's lights on. Kind of flashing weak, crappy on these. Well, it's because there's electronics uh, in that USB deal, and there's enough of a parasitic draw to turn that light on. And that concerned me. So let's figure out uh, what kind of parasitic draw we have, because uh, that I bought these specifically because they had an on-off button. And I could turn it off or turn it on, and I thought that that would eliminate the draw but did it. So let's get the meter out and take a peek see. So if I take my meter, I've got uh, my meter set up for amps, uh, milliamps right now. And we're going to check across here. And with, with the power switch off, I draw 1.33 milliamps on that one. You can see how the light went off. That's because the current's going through my meter instead of that LED. So 1.3 milliamps DC. And I've also got a 1.2 milliamp draw there. Well, how much is a milliamp and how much should we be concerned? Uh, we don't want any parasitic draw, but it looks like we're going to have some. So, I probably just had my hand in front of the meter for that whole thing, didn't I? See that? 1.32. So, I'm going to reach over here and turn on this, uh, just the indicator. So, I just turned it on and turned on that one little, little blue LED. Well, that one little bitty LED pulls 13.5 uh, milliamps. So, and that kind of reflects why... Uh, why I wanted the on off switch so I could eliminate as much of the parasitic draw as possible. Uh, and that did, but I still have a 1 milli, 1.3 milliamp. So a total of two milliamp, three milliamps on those two USB sockets. Am I concerned about that? Uh, I don't think so. If I was going to leave this unattended without a charger on it for a long time, then that might be an issue. Um, but it's, it's just something to be aware of. The problem is, is that, okay, let's take the fuses out. Well, then you got the parasitic draw of those LEDs, which is probably equal to or greater. So, uh, that's just something to think about and things that I discovered. Uh, I've got idiot lights on there. Here's the cool thing though. Uh, when I was, when I stopped to troubleshoot this, I looked at my phone and it was 18% and that's what I'm recording off of. And so I did plug my iPhone into that USB-C, the quick charger, just to test it out and see if it worked. And it went from 18% to 47% in 12 minutes. So that's, that's super cool. So these two sockets over here, those are dad's. Those are mine. And anyone wants to plug anything else in, they got to go get their own. So uh, that pretty much sums up this section of what we're doing here. Um, I'm going to add a few more uh, sockets, like we said. Uh, that's We'll just touch base with those uh, later on. And we're getting really close to being, being done with this. We'll get the charge controller on. That'll be an episode setting up the charge controller and the AC charge uh, system will be the next thing we do when I get those parts in. So, uh, like always, thanks for watching. Stay safe. Shoot straight. Oh, watch out for the red idiot lights.
Thanks for watching. Hey everybody, please like and subscribe.